What's hoppin' new friendos? Welcome back to the Tropical Garage. My name's Troy, and today we've got a special tutorial going over my new and improved communal tadpole setup for dendrobates and phyllobates. So to get things started off, I just marked for the hole that I'll be drilling for the bulkhead so I can easily drain the tank when I do want to do water changes. For the guide, I used an old piece of vinyl plank flooring from a project I did last summer and I simply taped it down to keep it secure, give it a little squirt squirt, and carefully start drilling. And if you've never drilled glass before, do a quick search on the old YouTube. There's plenty of videos showing how to correctly do it. Now, as far as putting the basic tank together, it's pretty simple. You're gonna need some tape, aquarium grade silicone, a caulking gun, and I use the back of a Sharpie marker to smooth out the silicone, but you can use whatever tickles your fancy. Now the tank itself is designed to fit your standard 48 inch wide Baker rack. And this one's dimensions are 44 inches wide by 17 inches deep by seven inches tall. And what you see me doing here is really just the prepping pieces of glass with tape so that once the edges of the glass meet with the silicone, I can tape it right away and they don't end up, you know, falling down or falling away from the meeting point. Now it's time to do some work with a caulking gun and silicone. Now, I personally use the ASI aquarium grade silicone. Um, I think it's just a much better product for this application than say your GE silicone. And it's honestly about the same price. So, you know, I know some people like act like they don't know where to get it, but I just get mine off Amazon. So it's incredibly easy to get. And um, yeah, I mean, you can use the GE silicone if you want, but like I said, I just think this is, you'll have a much better result with the ASI brand. And on to the first panel. I always start with the back panel first, and then I sort of just work my way around when adding the others. This piece is pretty important in making it as square as possible, so I tend to take a little extra bit of time making sure that the back edges are lined up really close. And then I add the left panel, and I add a vertical bead of silicone for the front piece to adhere to. Uh, vertical beads suck by the way, so always try to do as many horizontal flat beads as possible for the cleanest overall result. The front panel is next and it's pretty self-explanatory, but you do need to add one more vertical bead of silicone for the right panel. And after you slide the right panel in place, make sure all your tape is down and the tank is pretty secure. It is time to start flattening out the beads for a nice waterproof seal. So for this step, I just simply run one thin bead along all the seams and then I flatten them out with a back of a Sharpie marker. But like I said before, you can use whatever you want. I just find that the Sharpie marker is really easy and um, yeah, it gives a nice clean result. So before I continue on with the build, I wanted to check and see how much space the Heiger HG113 heater was gonna be taking up. And what attracted me to this heater was not only the power, but it was a fairly thin heater, which wasn't gonna take up a whole lot of real estate in terms of the horizontal space. And I thought it was gonna work perfect for my application. And like most heaters, this one comes with some nice quality suction cups. And what's also nice about this one is it comes with a digital control panel for setting your desired parameters, which I will go over later in a little more depth. And would you look at that? It fits like a glove. Now this material is a perforated PVC um, that I actually discovered looking for some sort of shield for the bottom of my racks, as you can see there. And what I'm actually going to be using it for is the partitions between certain types of locales that I'm going to be keeping to keep the tadpoles separate. And what I used to make the guides to hold the pieces of PVC were some one inch by seven inch pieces of glass to 
basically sandwich the PVC between two pieces of glass. This step was definitely the most time consuming and required the most amount of patience. And then you just repeat this step four more times. Now it's time to connect my drain and bulkhead and I'm using the OD Fusion Single Step. This is my first time ever doing anything like this, but my buddy Braxton, AKA Froghouse Tropics on Instagram, recommended this to me. And I gotta say it was super easy to use and it's worked out great so far. So highly recommend this product for this application. And the next step, I needed to drill some holes for the airline hose to feed through some wire glands. And for this, I use the typical 5 8 inch diamond tipped hole saw that I use for all my misting nozzles and bulkheads. And um, here you can see I have one of my wire glands that I'm gonna be using. This will allow the airline tube to not become kinked and allow air to always flow while being able to use a glass lid on top of the tank so that froglets couldn't escape when they climb out of the water. And it also gives a super clean look, I feel. And you repeat that step four times. And here I also drilled a little half hole so that the heater wire didn't compromise the lid. And as far as the actual construction of the tank, you're basically done. So here's a few shots of what the tank should currently look like. All we really need to do now is add the electronics, the filtration, and the drain hose and some 90 degree elbows. And I'm using the same product that I used before to connect the elbow to the bulkhead. Again, this sets up really, really quick. So you do need to work a little fast, but it's so easy to use. For the air pump, I use the Heiger Strong Air Pump. I'm not sure on the actual model number for this, but I got it off Amazon and uh, it came with the manifold, the little manifold and everything. Um, let me tell you, this thing puts out some serious air and it's really quiet. So very impressed with this product so far. And I also grabbed a bunch of these uh, sponge filters off Amazon. They're adjustable and flexible. So I also thought that these would work perfect for the shallow uh, tank application. Time to fill her up. And I'm happy to add there were no leaks. And also the reason that I have the sponge down is because I had some sand in the one section and I wanted to avoid the water from being cloudy. Ooh, we've got bubbles, baby. Just gotta plug the heater in and install the dock for the control panel, which they provided some double-sided tape for but since the rack is not a completely flat surface and it has some holes and gaps, um, I also used some zip ties to secure it in place so that it wouldn't fall down and I wouldn't have to keep fixing it. So this was uh, basically uh, an initial setup, getting it to stick, and the zip ties are more of a fail safe. Uh, and you can see here, I have it turned on and when you see this symbol, it's showing that it is heating and it's working. And I am setting up multiple of these tadpole tanks. So I'm gonna be playing around with temperatures to see if it changes anything with size of the tadpoles or how quickly they morph out, things like that. So this one I have set to 75, but you certainly don't have to set yours to 75 if you don't want. 
You can set yours to whatever your little heart desires. And I took a few clips here of when I initially set these tanks up, and I took a few shots of the tadpoles snacking on some blowworms. So I have to confess that I initially set this tank up back in the spring of 2024 and around that time my personal life and work life became quite busy and I really didn't have time and I neglected them quite a bit over the summer. A few still morphed out anyhow but I, even though I wasn't feeding them and yeah it was really just I wasn't able to stay on track over the summer but that's part of the reason I'm so excited about this new tadpole system. It's because I do have the time in the winter months and that was a huge problem with the old setup because they weren't heated. And my tadpole setup is pretty close to the garage doors, so I was running into issues with certain funguses that when the water drops below seven degrees can be pretty detrimental for your tadpoles. So now that I have some time over the winter time and my tanks are heated, I'm happy to announce that I've been pooling eggs and raising tadpoles since the start of November and everything really has been working out beautifully so far. And as you can see from the footage, there are tadpoles of various sizes and ages, all living together in harmony with very little cannibalism going on. The water is also heavily stained with Indian almond leaves, and I'm still primarily feeding Rapashi, Soylent Green. Every once in a while they get some bloodworms. I've added some floating plants and Anubias in some of the sections, and I'm also using spring water, if anyone was wondering. All right, friendos, that's going to do it for this tremendous tadpole tutorial. I hope you guys enjoyed this one and hopefully learned something that you'll be able to add in your own setup. Have a great week, and we'll see you on the next video in roughly 16 years. Goldberg, out.